So next we'll move on to the election of Board of Education <coughs> Officers, the president of the board. And uh, before we move on to that, I would just like to uh, read a statement to let everyone know that I'm not seeking nomination to president of this Board of Education. In recapping last year, I'm proud of the accomplishments that the Board of Education has achieved. We validated the mission set statement, we set district goals, we agreed on a process to review policy through NISBA and the policy committee. We agreed on evaluation tool for the superintendent and Board of Education and completed the evalu evaluation of the superintendent. We demonstrated consensus with our decision making while, while utilizing the mission statement and the district goals. Last year I had indicated that I was willing to serve as president and shared that I had leadership principles. I, I shared that I had leadership principles with board members prior to electing me to serve as president. I read them last year at the reorganizational meeting. They were as follows. I believe that the Board of Education has a participatory, ah, participatory role. We all need to come to any function prepared, focused, and willing to participate. Number two, I don't agree with bringing personal likes and dislikes to the table, differences from convictions or values. We need to look at all decisions in a fair and objective manner while taking into consideration individual circumstances if needed, but not in a personal way, good or bad. I believe in a collaborative team effort. This is not the president leading and making decisions independent of the entire board. Ideas and perspectives are valued from each member. Decisions are made after considering each member's views while coming to a collective agreement that all members feel that they're respected and valued for the input into the decision. Decisions are always considered, are always considered, decisions always consider children's needs and safety first with regard to the mission statement, district goals, policies, and as much information data that can be provided. We started off with three board goals that coincided with Dr. Reardon's. They were building positive relationships, communication through listening and professional development. While we may have started off strong, we failed at the very basic level within the board itself. I have been disheartened by the events that have come to light through conjecture. It is unfortunate that in a, in a willingness to serve, school board members are subject to what feels like intimidation, name calling, accusations, and, and beratement. With that being said, I would like to publicly state, I was not, number one, I was not involved in any way against any staff member. Uh, number two, I did not in any way harass or intimidate any staff member or notified of such. Number three, I did not vote, approve or vote for anything that would directly or indirectly benefit me. Number four, I did not have any staff member come to me seeking in any way a benefit, nor did I go to the superintendent seeking a benefit for any individual staff member. So thank you very much. And so we'll move on to any nominations. Andy. Anyone care I would, to second it? I would second. First of all, I just want to say thank you to Pat and, and Katrina for your service to, in the, as officers this past year. It's never an easy job to take on, um, and I appreciate the statement that you read. I'd like to nominate Andy as, uh, for president, or second Pat's nomination. Can we call the roll? We can. Mrs. Castle? Yes. Mrs. Dinah? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Mr. Lanesey? Yes. Mrs. Mack? Yes. Yeah. Can you vote for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> you just did, right? I guess I just did. <laughs> and a note for president. And for uh, vice president, I also um, will not be seeking uh, re-election to that, and I have a statement. Um, I will not be seeking to continue being vice president of the board. I will, however, continue to be an active member of this board. Um, there is no, so there is no confusion in my role. Board members are responsible for the general educa for the education of children residing in the district. Generally, school boards are responsible for the admission, instruction, discipline, grading, and as appropriate, classification of students attending public schools in their district, and for the purchasing, leasing, maintaining, and insuring school buildings property equipment and supplies. This is according to section 1709 of education law. During my campaign, I said I was passionate about education and would monitor student achievement data to assure that all students are provided with an appropriate education while ensuring that we are fiscally responsible. I will continue to do this. 
In addition, I'd like to be very clear with everyone that while I attended scrapbook sessions with at least one staff member, I have not been asked by this staff member or any child, adult, or business for any special consideration as a result of being on the Board of Education of the Wine and Skill Union Free School District. Since it is also obvious that individuals in the district and on the board have had access to emails that I have sent to the superintendent, I would like at a later time during this meeting to have Dr. Reardon explain if he gave these individuals access to my emails or if our email system is not secure. So you can now open nominations. Okay, I'd like to nominate Darcy Mack. I'll second. <clears throat> Mrs. Castle? Yes. Mrs. Dynan? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Mr. Lanasey? Yes. You the signs yes. that we all sign. Okay. 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 So I guess we'll move on to number three, appointment of officers, uh, consent agenda. Um, first one is for clerk of the board. That would be Sharon Hellis. Uh, B, district treasurer, Mary Ellen Ag Angrizano. C, deputy treasurer, Dr. Thomas Reardon. D, tax collector, uh, Denise Fitzgerald, and that is at a stipend of $4,504, and E, internal claims auditor, Thomas Martin, and that's at a stipend of $4,410. I make a motion. I second. I have a question, though. If it, say, if it doesn't say stipend, that means there's no stipend. Correct. And if there's a contract, it'll say what year we're in and of how many years. So if it's the first year of a three-year contract with them, it'll stay on there. Okay, last year I asked that any time there isn't a stipend, if we could just put no stipend so that it would be clear to okay. everybody in the public that people are doing this as a part of their job and there is no extra payment for it. Just. Mrs. Castle? Yes. Mrs. Dana? <coughs> yes. Ms. Gray? Yes. Mr. Lanasey? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Other appointments? Uh, consent agenda? Uh, school physician? Riverview Pediatric? Uh, it's a yearly appointment at $50 per hour. Uh, B. School attorney? Whiteman, Osterman, and Hannah. This is the third year of a three year contract. Central treasurer? Extra classroom activity account? Denise Fitzgerald, 
uh, yearly appointment, no stipend. Attendance officer, uh, Catherine Fezzioli, yearly appointment, no stipend. Independent auditor, Raymond J. Prusser, CPA PC, first year of a three-year contract uh, at $13,200. Uh, record access officer, Sharon Hillis, yearly appointment, no stipend. Uh, records management officer, Sharon Hillis, yearly appointment, no stipend. <coughs> Asbestos, LEA designee, Neil Benassi, yearly, no stipend. Pesticide notification officer, Neil Benassi, yearly appointment, no stipend. The purchasing agent, Dr. Reardon, no stipend. And financial advisors, Fiscal Advisors Incorporated, yearly at 145 an hour. I make a motion. Second. I just have a question. What do we use? What are the financial advisors? Fiscal advisors basically comes in uh, and basically does kind of our overview. That would you say kind of our overall mm -hmm. audit, basically our external audit. Okay. We have basically. a we have a five year plan, right. and they come in and assist us with that. They'll assist us if we. Um, Going into the capital project to assist us with the Oh, okay. <coughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. They also yep. provide if it has like kind of advice on, like, you know, when we close out our June 30th books, you know, where to allocate funds and things like that. You know. Kathy, they did a really nice report last year. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have a copy of it or if it's online. Mm -hmm. sure. it's, it's online. online. But it's online. Yeah. yeah. The PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They did a nice little book for all of us. I have extras mm -hmm. of that in the office. Yeah, maybe. Do you want a copy of that? It shows okay. the history of expenditures and funding. I think you were between them may have given me a copy of it. I think. Well, yeah, I probably showed you one. Oh, okay. But I don't think I gave you one. I have I some extras. One. Okay, I just so wasn't familiar with it, so. Okay, they, thanks. They also did a school enrollment study as part of I do of have a copy it. of that. Okay. Yeah. Mrs. Thank Kessel? You. Yes. Mrs. Dana? Yes. Ms. Gray? Yes. Mr. Lanasey? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Designations, again, a consent agenda, official bank depository, M&T Bank, um, our regular meetings, July 7th, 2016, August 25th, 2016, September 15th, 2016, October 20th, 2016, November 17th, 2016, December 15th, 2016, January 19th, 2017, February 16th, 2000, 2017, March 16th, 2017, April 13th, 20, 2017, <laughs> correction there, yep. May 18th, 2017, and June 25th, 2017, and also our official newspaper, the Troy Becker. I make a motion. Second. Any questions? Mrs. Castle? Yes. Ms. Dynan? Yes. Ms. Gray? Yes. Mr. Lanasee? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Okay, authorizations, again a consent agenda. To certify payrolls, Dr. Thomas Reardon. Conferences, conventions, payment approval, workshop attendance, Dr. Thomas Reardon. To establish the Petty Cash Fund, Mary, El Mary Ellen Agrazano in the business office and Kathy Fazioli in the main office. The business office will have $75, the main office will have $50. Designation of signatures on checks, Mary Ellen Angrizano. Alternate designee for signatures on checks, Dr. Thomas Reardon. Budget transfers on chief school officer's approval, Dr. Thomas Reardon. And the superintendent to apply for grants and aid, state and federal, Dr. Thomas Reardon. Make a motion. Second. Any questions? Yes. Can we just put on those ones that don't show a stipend? There is no stipend for that? Thank you. Well, these are just, th these are authorizations, not appointments, correct? So authorizations wouldn't have money involved anyway. Am I right or not? I don't know. I mean, these aren't, these aren't titles, so they kind right, of just be more right. like, it's you just know. authorizing them to do something, so there wouldn't be any financial thing associated with them, correct? Perhaps in Perfect. seven, though, there'd be some that need a no stipend. Anything else? 
Mrs. Castle? Yes. Mrs. Dynan? Yes. Ms. Gray? Yes. Mr. Lanesey? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Official undertakings, bonds, consent agenda again. Uh, the district clerk, Sharon Hillis, district treasurer, Mary Ellen Angrozano, deputy treasurer, Dr. Thomas Reardon, district tax collector, Denise Fitzgerald, central treasury activity funds, De Denise Fitzgerald, internal claims auditor, Thomas Martin, and all persons in positions required by law or regulation to be bonded. Motion. Second. Any questions? Okay. Okay. Mrs. Russell? Yes. Mrs. Dynan? Yes. Ms. Gray? Yes. Mr. Lancey? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Okay. Other items? Again, a consent agenda. <coughs> Readoption of all policies and codes of ethic in effect during the previous year. Establish mileage reimbursement rate at the IRS established rate. The acting superintendent, Mary Yotis, at 125 a day, in addition to principal salary upon assignment. Driver physicals and drug screenings, St. Peter's Health Partners, it's a yearly contract uh, through DOT. Physicals are $110, drug screenings are $75. <coughs> Establishment of school breakfast, lunch, snack rates for 2016-17. Breakfast at $1.40, lunch at $2.70. Uh, for adults, two dollars and twelve cents for breakfast, and three dollars and eighty-three cents for lunch. And set rates for substitutes: teachers and teaching assistant, ninety dollars certified, seventy dollars non-certified. Substitute teacher aide, seventy dollars per day. Substitute custodian, twelve dollars and fifty cents an hour. Substitute nurse, seventy-five dollars per day. Substitute food service helper, nine dollars and seventy cents per hour. Substitute recess aid, $9.70 per hour. <coughs> substitute clerical, $12.50 per hour. And substitute bus driver, $14 per hour. I make a motion. Second. Second. I do have one comment though, and I understand that it, this is a real price, but $75 for drug screening is crazy. But that is the going price. <laughs> is but it I'm just saying, that's really? just, to collect some people. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. But that's the going rate. Though? That's it. Oh yeah, that it's it's quite expensive to not to do it, but that's what they, they charge. Do. Yeah, they charge it. Do it for ten. Well, right. yeah, my question was obviously the hundred and ten. The seventy-five is on top of the hundred and ten, mm -hmm. right? Correct. That's and correct. how often do they have to be done? I think they're done by DOT. Like they say, this driver has to go. Mm -hmm. And they're randomly pulled. Right. So, and then of well, course they have their whatever yearly or whatever. Well, the, year, the yearly, yearly physical, but the drug screen would just be today's your day. Right. So maybe it's ten percent of quarter, you know, or twenty-five percent a quarter, and then not they make a whole something like that. So we have a budget item for random drug screening, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. physicals, and mm -hmm. screen physicals. Actually, I think mm -hmm. it's the actual line of screen mm -hmm. and physicals. And, and DOT just walks in one day and says, you? They can. They can. And also well, after. I, uh, after I understand they can. But they like do, or after an accident, like if there's a bus accident, even if it was just a, a non-moving violation, they would send you immediately to be drug tested mm -hmm. right after that. So we'd have to bring that person down. Okay. Even if someone picked up, like if you were a driver in a parked bus and we hit you, we'd have to take you down to be drug tested. Sure. Our insurance wants that mm. just to prove that our driver wasn't under the influence of anything. And they all pass a yearly physical, or they don't start in September. Right. Correct. Is there some elderly looking? <laughs> <laughs> they do better than some of them. I'm not <laughs> saying they don't. <laughs> they might pass the test better than me. But Can, Good Can I ask about the nine dollars and seventy cents per hour? Um, are we, I know minimum wage is going up. Is this in line with that? This, um, actually, that, that was just going to point out some changes from last year. Yes, this keeps us in line just above that cutoff of 950 would be the, the next minimum wage step. So it keeps us just in that 
range of, you know, we thought we'd go 20 cents above mm -hmm. um, so that we're, if that changes by January 1st, we're still kind of locked into that. Um, also, we did, um, we kept the teacher rates the same. We did bring down, though, um, the substitute clerical. It's not something we use often, but also the substitute clerical was actually um, $15 an hour. So actually, the, the, a substitute clerical would make more than a teacher during the day. So we felt that this was more in line with kind of, you know, when we use it, we use it very rarely, you know. So that was $15 an hour, we brought that down to twelve fifty, which is still very, very competitive. Thank you. And I believe lunch went up 10 cents. 10 or 20, it was very minimal. 10, yes, but it was nice numbers yeah, 10 or 20 for kids. Anyway. I wish I could buy lunch for three dollars and eighty-three cents. <laughs> yeah. Mrs. Andy, yes. bring your lunch. Mrs. Dynan. Yeah. Yes. Ms. Gray. Yes. Mr. Lanesy. Yes. Ms. Mack. Yes. Okay. Additional appointments. Again, a consent agenda. CSE CPSE committee. Uh, this is a yearly appointment. No stipend. Jean Marie Steffick. Kathy Vale. Kimberly Herzl Betts, Stephanie Carbone, Mary Yotis, uh, TBA Advanced Hello. Therapy for OT, TBA Advanced Therapy Therapy for PT, Amy Murf Murphy, uh, our Winnetsco Union Free School District teachers, Ann Hansen from Rensselaer County, and all ASEPs and county approved providers. Section 504 compliance, yearly appointment, no stipend. Mary Yotis, uh, in, impartial hearing officers, yearly appointment at $40 an hour. Here's quite the list, and I don't think we know any of them, so I'm not going to read it. <laughs> uh, Title IX compliance officer, yearly appointment, no stipend, Amy Murphy. Uh, legislative liaison for NISBA CAPSPA, yearly appointment, no stipend, Katrina Dynan. Homeless liaison coordinator, Yearly appointment, no stipend, Amy Murphy. Special education surrogate parents, yearly appointment, no stipend, Marcia Anderson, Kenneth Anderson, and Dominica Welling. <coughs> Special education preschool programs, Capital District Beginnings, Early Childhood Education Center, Story Place Preschool, Unity Sunshine Preschool, Achievements, and Spotted Zebra Preschool. Spotted zebra. Dignity for all compliant or dignity for all co-coordinators. Yearly appointment, no stipend. Amy Murphy and Kim Herzl Betts. And the audit committee, yearly appointment, no stipend. Sally Lozetta, Andrew Lanasey, and Darcy Mack. I make a motion. Second. Any questions? Yes. Um, I corrected this last year and the year before, actually. Um, Rensselaer County Rep and the approved preschool providers are not members of the CPSC. And I know Lee did research on it and said that was right. While they attend, they aren't voting members. So should we change them to attendees or just scratch them? Scratch them. Which one do you know? Ann Hansen and the county approved providers. Any other questions? Oh, could you want to stay on? Yeah, I'll go with that. Okay. I'll have more meetings for you. Yeah, we actually didn't ask you and Andy. No. That's you, okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Would it change if we put stipend? No. <laughs> <laughs> I still wouldn't want it, <laughs> but I'll do it. Mrs. Castle? Yes. Mrs. Dynan? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Mr. Lanasey? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Okay. Instructional contracts. Brunswick, $9,374 for regular education, actual cost for special special education uh, with East Greenbush, $8,625 for regular education, actual cost for special education, 
with Averill Park, $7,848 for regular education, actual cost for special education with Troy, uh, to be determined at the state set rate for regular education and also to be determined at the state set rate for special education. <coughs> Little red tuition rate to attend wine and scale, uh, 2015 through 2018 with a 2% cap increase. K six K through six uh, for this next year, 2016 17, six thousand six hundred and ninety-eight dollars for next year, 2017, 2018, six thousand eight hundred and thirty-two dollars. For seventh and eighth, for 2016, 17, seven thousand four hundred and six dollars. For seventeen, eighteen, seven thousand five hundred and fifty-four dollars. And for special ed at the state set rate. And Tuition to attend Wine and Skill Union Free School District, grades K through five, New York State's New York State set tuition rates, and six through eight, also New York State set tuition rates. Make a motion. Second. Any questions? Yes. Can we change regular education to general education? It's the more correct term, if more correct is a appropriate term. Um, because it makes special ed sound irregular. Yeah. So the state's been using general education for years. So if we could just do that. <coughs> Anything else? No. Mrs. Kessel? Yes. Mrs. Steinen? Yes. Ms. Gray? Yes. Mr. Lanesley? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. That concludes our annual organization meeting. We'll now move on to 1.5, review of the agenda and any additions to the agenda. Dr. Sure. Uh, good summer evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us, all six of us. That's good. <coughs> Got our last crime. Um, so once again, now that we've completed our organizational meeting, we have two presentations tonight. Uh, we have uh, Beth Bissell, who will be going over our uh, kind of our end of the year NWA and FMP data for our Cade population. And also we have with us uh, Mr. Martin, who will kind of just be giving us the, uh, the state of the state, if you will, and kind of where we are in, in terms of the financial world. And of course we have one other um, addition that you all have in front of you, one other um, consent agenda item, and I believe that is it. I don't know that we have a PTO report tonight. Uh, we'll give a principal's report. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to 1.6. Approval of minutes of the previous meeting, meeting, uh, January, January, June sixteenth, twenty sixteen. Make a motion. A second. Any questions? No. Do I call people out? No, just motion carried. Oh. Uh, just like all in favor. All in favor. Aye. Yes. Aye. One point seven building use. Looks like we have one uh, special Olympics. Looks like they're looking for March fourteenth, twenty seventeen through May 9th, twenty seventeen. On a Tuesday, <coughs> seven to nine in the gym. Can I have a motion? No motion. Second. Any questions? Yes. It's tennis only. Is the only special Olympic team we're fielding? It is, yes. That, that's um, Mr. Mesh's special. But we don't yeah. have any other teams? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Is it actually that we're fielding him, or is he just looking for use I think, to... I think he's just looking for use for kind of to, to practice those teams, practice. you know, for the team. Jim County. Jim County. Jim County. I don't understand what... what Through the county. Andy, what did you say that... Well, you said that we're fielding. Well, that the district kids are in. Right. So I think it's not just district kids. It's I believe it's anybody in the county. Well, it says we'll, open to GD students. It right. Is. It is open to. I mean, so we'll have GD students that participate. This is his particular specialty. Like, so there are perhaps other teams and other sports, but he's not overseeing that. That but are sense. there other kids other than GD kids on this yes. tennis team? Yes. yes, there are. Yes. Okay. 
as kind of mentioned in a correspondence to the board, that was kind of, um, we felt, based on the fact that it does pull from GD Kids, it is one of our teachers, it's something we've marketed as, you know, something positive that, that Mr. Mesh does. Um, it's not a, a, a for-benefit piece. We thought the level one piece of not charging was the best thing to go. Now, could it be more than the G, more non-GD kids? Absolutely, but we just felt that this would not be one we'd want to apply that kind of form of the two. So, yes, it could certainly be a lot of East Greenwich kids, so to say, to speak, but I think because it's our own person that we've kind of marketed as, you know, something we're proud of, I think that'd be the right thing to do. But as long as it still falls under not-for-profit group, yes, it would still be yes, level yes. one. Yes, exactly. No, yeah, he's definitely doing that. I just was, I didn't understand the form. I never understand these forms. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Okay. Uh, visitors and communication, 1.8. Communications to the board. Uh, we got an email from a t Terry Lartaccio. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but if I remember right, it was about veterans. Um, greetings, first of all, I'd like to, I want to thank you for your time and effort put in to being on the Board of Ed. Your servanthood to the community is appreciated. I'm wondering what what is happening with the possible veterans tax exemption that we voted on in May. What is the status of this as we speak? I personally am not a vet veteran, although my husband is, and I think it is honorable thing that you are considering this exemption for those men and women who so selflessly volunteered their services to the United States government. A small exemption is the very least we can do to show them the appreciation they so deserve. If the exemption is put in place, what must we do to sign up for it? Any direction you can give me on this matter would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for your time. Sincerely, Terry Martaccio. So, could Is you... Is that something that Dr. Reardon can yeah, respond? Can you, can you yeah. Oh, certainly. Let her know where we're at? Absolutely. So, would you mind sending that to me so I can... Thank you. And the board is still okay with using our... Um, we said our August meeting, right, for a hearing? I thought it was September. I'm sorry, September meeting. Right, you're okay September. using September. We we'll use August to notify as kind of our veterans hearing, and then we could. Yep. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. With a vote in October. With a vote, if you wanted to vote in October. Wanted to, yeah. mm -hmm. This must have been done when I was. Yes. Here. So August to notify September. September. What? We'll use our September board meeting as kind of our, our uh, also as our public hearing, as required by law. And then the board would make the decision in October as to what, if they want to participate, and then if so, which level would they like to participate? Okay. So we'll re provide, of course, at that meeting the same information that we provided last time, only because um, it's still a snapshot, it's still a prediction, but at least kind of gives us an idea of what the typical taxpayer would encounter, whether you did level one, two, or three. Okay. Thank you. And now on to opportunity for the public to be heard. Does anybody want I actually to have a question. Um, do you guys know, like in front of you, the you guys didn't list the monetary values for the special ed rates, and I just didn't know if those were <coughs> in your notes, or I can look them up. I just didn't know if you had them readily available. The monetary values. I'm sorry. For the tuition. Sorry, on the the contract agreement. Mm -hmm. um, everything for special ed says state set rate. And I just didn't know if you had that written in front of you, because I can look it up. I just didn't know if you had it written in front of you. We, to throw out there, we do not, um, if it helps though, for the A, B, and C, it's an actual cost, what, what it costs to educate that particular student. So that would be a broken down. Okay. Um, the state rates, we don't have at this point. Um, oh, so for this, so okay. the state sets so that kind of, so the only one left actually, just to kind of point out, we have negotiated solid general education rates with Brunswick, East Greenbridge, Naval Park for budgeting purposes. It used to just be always state set rates, but the special ed rate, we actually pay for what the student um, utilizes. So they'll break that down into a percentage of what that student is using per teacher cost per unit, if you will. Um, but Troy is the only one left that we leave as the state set rate only because it is much more nominal compared to the other three. I just am wondering what you guys charge a little bit for that. Yeah. Oh, oh, same, uh, that rate is set actually as for, you know, each year it gets set. So the state will come back and say, this is what you would get per student. 
when does that come out? That comes out. Like I want to say February. Oh, so is the February rate that was released what will be charged for this year? Or do you get back charged from February? Do you see what I'm saying? Like I'm not I do, yeah. Right. The February rate that's released is actually for There's an estimated rate a, that's released and then it's almost a year later when the actual yeah. comes okay. out. Okay. So okay. All right. That's all I need. Thank you. Yep. I just didn't know this is where I can get my answers straight. No, right. so, exactly. And sometimes that can vary by, like, for example, we've had experiences with Able Park where the, the estimate and the actual could be very markedly different. I mean, okay. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Okay. We'll move on to 2.0 reports to the Board of Education. 2.1. Board of Education reports and updates. Does anybody have anything? Am I reading? Did you want to read? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. We um, have a letter that I'm going to read out loud, and it's going to be sent to all the staff um, of the district. Last spring, the Board of Education received two letters expressing concerns about board members having personal relationships with staff members and suggesting that because of those relationships, the staff members were benefiting in some way. One of the letters was anonymous and one was from the WTA leadership. The Board of Education took the letter's allegations very seriously. We reflected on and reviewed our possible personal relationships within ourselves and with each other. We engaged our school attorney, Robert Schofield, to meet with staff and board members to explore the accusations. He found that perceptions of favoritism do exist, but that those perceptions may be stronger than the facts he identified to support them. Nevertheless, the board is troubled by the perceptions and wants to work hard to address them. The Board of Education would like to clearly state to the members of the WTA, the other district staff, and our community that the entire BOE is committed to treating all personnel fairly and equitably. Similarly, it expects that all district personnel must follow all <coughs> work and contract rules. If a staff member is not performing their job in a satisfactory manner, they will be counseled following the proper process. In addition, the board continues to ask that the chain of command be followed. Complaints or concerns should be reported to administration and up to Dr. Reardon. Dr. Reardon will inform all BOE members of these situations and the BOE will consider what actions, if any, to take. We ask that all employees respect our positions as BOE members if you see us in public. Please do not circumvent the chain of command on an individual basis and ask us about or mention issues that should be considered through this process. We, of course, welcome our interactions with all of you, but in the event that there's a concern that you need to share, we ask that proper procedure be followed in lieu of contacting individual board members. Thank you for your understanding and for the trust you have placed in each of us. Board of Education, Wine and Scale, the Indian Free School District. Now we'll watch all staff either tomorrow or Monday. Okay, thank you. Looks like we are going to move on to Mr. Tom Martin, our internal claims auditor. Hello. I don't really have a report. Uh, you do get that monthly, but since it was such an early one, I haven't had time to prepare that. But I just wanted to come before you because I do work for you. Um, I should start out by saying I know the majority of you know me and met me. And, uh, I'm not sure if I met Patricia or Darcy, but I know I met the rest of you. And I do work for you. If you ever need have any questions of me, my cell phone is, you can get a hold of me. Uh, Mr. Dr. Reardon has it, uh, the finance office has it. And if you need to talk, you just give me a call. I'm here to answer your questions. Um, I should have been here before. Uh, generally, I like to come when the intern or the audit report is given. And I've mentioned to Sharon earlier that I'd like to be on that board meeting. That's the way we've done it in the past. I had some family issues that knocked that off and been trying to get onto the board agenda and finally got here. But uh, everything within your school district is going very well. The, you know, my main job is to make sure there's another set of eyes watching on what's being paid so that there is uh, no irregular payments that go out and uh, that shouldn't. And uh, so far, the finance office has been doing a great job of that. 
as you see on the board reports and it comes through occasionally I have questions they might forget to have a yeah, sign off on a particular piece things of that nature it's, uh, for the most part as you'll see on there there's two on the top I wish I had one with me it would be a lot easier to explain to you on the top there's somewhere I've asked questions basically they're harmless questions something has been uh, not included in the paperwork things of that nature there's another column which since I've been doing it we've never used and that's something material that appears to be irregular, shouldn't have been done, uh, something that is looking to be paid and shouldn't be, things of that nature. We've never used that column, and hopefully we never do, because it, it does come to that. There's something wrong. And like I said, uh, your finance office is doing a great job. And uh, so like I said, I will try to attend that every that regular meeting on a year. That way you'll always see who I am, know who I am. Be here, and like I said, you can send me an email, call me anytime you like. Okay. Anybody has any questions? I'm more than happy to try to answer. I just want to say thank you, Tom. We appreciate um, all the years of service. I, I'm sure that you might have even been, been on when Kathy was on. So, uh, how That's many a long time sure. ago? <laughs> how many years? I haven't met Kathy <laughs> as this board been. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I might have started around the same time. Yeah, you I think did. we did. I think we did. So I think many, Bell might have been many moons ago. How many years have you been doing it for us? Bell. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's a I, long time though. Actually, I started out as the treasurer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, then it, it changed things. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Different directions. We moved different things. And then at that point, there was, a, I think it's Rosedale. Dr. Reardon may know better as to the exact. A school district in the Roswell. Long Island. Right. Roswell. Roswell. Oh, yeah, Roswell. Yeah. Roswell. Roswell. Bad one. Yeah. 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 The, uh, <laughs> actually, I think it might have been superintendent. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Invested millions of right. dollars. Yes. And, and, it changed and that's everything. when they started uh, putting people with the internal claims auditor in place just to have another set of eyes on it. For your dry cleaning. So, pardon? He was using the dry cleaning. <laughs> yes. yes. And, and you keep us out of the newspapers. Please. <laughs> so, I've been doing it. I actually have lost track of years. So I have been trying to throw out some of the old paperwork I have, so I, I know there's stacks of them, so it's been a lot. Well, we appreciate it, Tom, and you know, it, the, the whole business office is a great team, and so having you there, you know, kind of a, as our eyes and ears is, has been beneficial, so thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Like I said, if you ever have any questions, give me a call. Thank you thank for you. coming. Thank you. Thank you I finally put a face with that monthly report. <laughs> yes, well, that, and that's my fault. You know, I I got off track there and I didn't get back on. Uh, that's why she explained it. Like I said, if I come with the uh, the internal or the external auditor, then uh, you know you'll see me at a regular basis. Okay. Thank you. We will move on. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll move on to the district data report by. Elizabeth Bissell. Here it comes. here in the fall and I talked about NWEA and I shared some data from NWA and tried to just share what the process is with that and some of the reports that come from that. So I just have a few slides for you tonight but I wanted to start by <coughs> sharing a similar slide that I shared with you in the fall. And so this first slide is our NWEA reading from springtime. So it's presented in the same way it was in the fall. So if you look down at the bottom, you'll see kindergarten, the number next to it's the number of students. And then it's broken down by percentile ranks. So there's a color for each one. So the bottom two, which are the blue and the red, are really the percentile rankings that we would be flagging. And we would say, you know, those are kids that would flag for us. There's some concern there that, they're, that their percentile ranking is so low. So you can see at each grade level how many students are in there, and then you can see um, where they fall with each, each of the bands. So that's the same report that you saw in the fall, obviously, with our spring results. And for the board, what we can do is, I know the numbers are small, we can give you paper copies as well if you would like to take mm -hmm. these with you, if that sounds good. Yeah. And I 
have a similar slide with second grade students. This is going to work. <laughs> Sharon, that's <laughs> what we're That these are the September scores or the fall scores or the spring scores? Those are the spring scores. So the last so this is this is the new one. You yes. had right. The last time I was here I presented fall, so this is our end results for the year in our spring administration of the MWEA. And so here are the math um, the math <coughs> results presented in the same exact grade. way. <coughs> Very strong second grade. Does anybody have any questions about that? So this is when we look at these two slides, we're thinking more about grade level proficiency mm -hmm. is like the term that we use. I know that we also talk about NWA in growth because it actually takes the students where they are and it measures how much they've grown in a year. So you can have a student who is not on grade level, but has grown enormous, enormously. So we, if you have a student who's two years behind on their reading level or their math level, you know, and they've grown a year and a half, it doesn't show that they're proficient, but they've had a huge amount of growth. So we want to make sure that when we're looking at our data that we consider both aspects of that. So I didn't share all of this information last time, so I'm just going to give you an explanation on this. So now I've added in, so if you look at the red, that's basically what you just saw. So it talks about students who are proficient. So it would be the three higher bands at each grade level. So we're saying they are proficient versus looking at the two lower bands as those are the kids that we're flagging. So your red is going to be kids that are NWA, I call it grade level prof proficiency. They were in the top three percentile rankings that they just gave. And then the blue is NWEA growth. So NWEA will, will um, produce a report that says, this is what you were in the fall. This is your projection for winter. This is your projection for spring. Did you make your projected growth? And it basically tells all the teachers if, if they got their children, students to where, they, where they're projecting that they should get to. Um, so that's a comparison of the growth versus proficiency. Keeping in mind what I just said about you can have a child who isn't proficient but it has grown a ton. Blue is growth. Blue is blue is growth. Yes. Yeah. So could you then say that the first grade, first third and third. fourth and third had the most significant growth, or or is it even the six because it's. Um, or definitely well, the you, you can look at this and say that fourth grade mm -hmm. had the highest percentage of students who reached the projected growth. Okay. So it is very straightforward mm -hmm. like that. So if, if you're at 89% of your kids met their growth, obviously that's a positive mm -hmm. versus 53% of your kids. Right. Okay. Um, but again, the discrepancy between the red and the blue, so, you know, so take fourth grade. So their grade level proficiency is... I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly. I have a year, but I'm going to say, say I'm an estimated 78 or 75, and you know they're 89 with the proficiency. Again, you can have a child who's not proficient, but really did meet their growth, mm -hmm. like grew enormously, and maybe getting closer to that proficiency, mm -hmm. but not quite there. Yet. Mm -hmm. um, and then the green one is one that we added in um, because we do Pontus and Pinnell, the testing. We I think we talked about it briefly last time. We didn't show any data. So that's also three times a year, um, and that's administered by the teachers. So classroom teachers, special education teacher, reading teachers, um, all test every student, K6. Um, and that's why you see four, oh, you know what? K5 on here. Um, there are some students in sixth grade, so I didn't put that because that would make it look really skewed. Because a lot of times, They've reached the end of it. Mm -hmm. They've re um, topped out of F and P, so not all sixth grade gets tested. So that's why you only see two lines with six, seven, and eight. So we throw the green bar in there 
and then you start looking at that and you say, okay, so we're talking about NWA proficiency and FMP proficiency. Um, they're not always spot on, but there's things to take into consideration with that. I mean, we primarily use FMP as a formative assessment. We're grouping our kids, we're looking at where they are at that moment, um, you know, what skills are we gonna work on, work on with them. Not that NWA doesn't give you skills to work on, but it gives us, um, it takes out the human piece of it, which also can add a factor in when you have a student on a computer and how they interact with the computer. Our younger kids, it's the first time they take it versus our seventh graders who have been doing it for years. So there's lots of different um, things to take into consideration with that. But we do use the FMP, you know, to drive our instruction um, on a regular basis. I mean, they do informal learning records that take the same format that they go throughout the whole year with. Um, we also do think about looking at that and saying, so we have 12 plus <coughs> teachers who, who uh, administer the FMP, so we have to think about the consistency of the administration of that. When it's on a computer, it's super, it's super consistent. <laughs> when you put in the human factor, you start to have some discrepancy there. So we do a lot of um, work during faculty meetings just so that we can say, okay, let's revisit that. And sometimes I think you start to feel like broken records, but it's really hard when you go add the human factor to keep everything exactly the same. So we have lots of discussions about that and the protocol for administering that test assessment. Um, let's see. Mary, Dr. Reardon, anything to add into that? Notice I think you covered it well. Basically, that's why we use both points of data, but the FMP is, I think, more for classroom information if that helps. Meaning, you know, how do you form reading groups, things like that. But there is always going to be an element, no matter how accurate you are, of margin of error, even down to students. You know, just to point out, students, when they take the NWA, my second grade home, for example, will take that all at the same time. Whereas if I'm f and ing you, um, you might be four days later, you know, than I, you know. So there's some factors with that, you know, of course. Yeah, I think one of the other things, um, too, is that when you think about, oh, I'm going to tell you, FMP, oh, for FMP, so, like, before when we, when I said they flag it, like, the lower two percentile rankings, there are kids that, like, flag. So we, we, I mean, we drill down. We meet on every single kid three times a year, and some kids more if we need to come around the table and talk about them. So it's like, there's lots more to it and drilling down, but with FMP, you normally are at least two grade le two levels below in order to flag. So I did green for FMP on or above, but we could have a student who didn't fall into that green bar, but he's only, he or she is only one level below grade level. So they may have grown, I and mean, we had a lot of kids this year who grew a ton, so they may have gone up six levels, and they're so close to being on level, but they're just not there yet. I think we always fight summertime with regression. We retest again in September. It's great to see how far kids have come, but we also wanna know what's happening to them over the summer, and what are they coming back um, with or without, and then we, you know, can, it's a lot of commonalities between the two, but we always have some variation, and then we have obviously taking that into consideration when we're working on our, our AIS sources. I just want to say that I think that having the multiple data points has been great. I think that the assessments that we chose using NWEA um, align beautifully with our FAP scores. Um, you'll see the consistency uh, with the same kids flagging, so I think. Um, Together, they're a great measure. When we meet with every teacher, literally Wednesday before school closed out, we met about every single student, and we talk about each of the 350 students here and how they did, and not did they meet a benchmark or not. We're able to see that nice growth, as Beth was saying, through NWEA, because we can see you know, maybe a child with special needs who is a couple of grade levels below, but we can still see great growth, and we can celebrate that. And the reports are now able to go home you know, to parents to show that. You know, if you have a struggling student, we are still looking and celebrating those um, increments of growth instead of just saying, didn't make this benchmark, didn't make this benchmark. So I'm very uh, happy with the assessments that um, we chose, you know, a few years ago. This is our third year using them, and I think that they, they give us a lot of great data. 
and I feel like the comment I hear most at Daily Team is from teachers is that we're so happy that we get to talk about every single student. We don't talk about just the kids that flag. We talk about every single student in their class, and some quicker than others. If you're flying and you're growing and you're you know proficient, and there might not be as much you know to say, but then we celebrate those successes too. And we, we I feel like this year we've done a lot of celebrating with the growth that, that kids made. And so it is nice for that student who may not be proficient but has grown a ton. So we're always like, oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Okay, they're not there yet but look at what they've done. And I think if you just look at proficiency, you miss that whole piece of, of the success that they had. <clears throat> there, you wanna put on the, uh, things. And so, obviously we only have NWA for math. We don't have the equivalency that we do for F and P. I mean, we do have some testing that we kind of drills down with kids. So if we come to CST and we know a student's really struggling in math, we can administer some more specific testing to really figure out, okay, what do we need to hit first? What are their deficiencies? Um, but it's not a universal screener, so we do NWA growth. And I just put up their growth and um, proficiency levels, which it always seems with math, it's stronger. And in this case, I feel like they're even closer together, the, the growth and the proficiency. But I think the concreteness of math seems to always have our scores a little higher in that area. Anybody have any questions? Yes, I had a question for Tom, and I had asked him. You don't. You said you don't use this as your baseline for next year. We don't. We do it. We retest NWA in usually the first week of school. But through all the research, it takes six weeks for the average child to get over the summer regression and that's the average child so you're testing the regression also then yes. right yes i know that was your doctor yes. <laughs> your we're study that you were looking at yes. so oh. doing it three times a year so we're looking we will compare this to especially the reading levels where the kids are coming off where the kids with regression how do we speed that up how can we plan for that do a better job of that. We sent more books home this year into kids' hands who we didn't think would have a, a steady supply of reading books. So we are going to be looking at that regression piece. We'll take them in September, and then again, we take it in January to see, did we catch up? Where are we? Are they still low? You know, for kids who did regress, hopefully we've remediated that in the first, I think it's said six weeks. And I think the point about the they a lot of kids, it takes them a little bit to get in the group again. Even the brightest of the kids yes, getting back in the swing of things. So again, it's taking previous data, taking current data, you know, taking into consideration the conversations we may have had about students before. <clears throat> and I think that um, there may be students who fall into the pocket that's low enough that they would receive services in September. So maybe that they left at the end of the year and they were doing well. They had a huge amount of regression as it's showing in that current state and that snapshot of a moment taking out that we know they just mean. But then they're getting a double dose, which gets them going even faster. And we've seen that with a, a lot of kids where they get that and they're up to speed quickly and then they don't need it anymore. Um, but it gives us the opportunity to say, let's give them a little bit. If we can give it to them, let's give it to them. Now, the second grade reading was very strong, very and the strong. growth was very strong, and their scores were very strong. Their growth in math is pretty strong, but they're still not there. Um, so when you talk to the second graders will be the third grade teachers, do you talk about this data, or do you just talk about the September data. Right, that's a great question. I think what happens is this data sits in front of them and the new data sits in front of them. So that gives us a conversation. When you look at right. a student who left X, Y, Z and now is, and you're gonna have every variation. You're gonna have high to high, you're gonna have low to low, you're gonna have, you know, was high and now is low and they're gonna flip all over the place. So I think looking at that is important. And I think the history of conversations that we've had over time, the team has built into taking more specific notes, recalling what other conversations have been, what has happened previously with this child. Again, I can think in my head of two students who have 
every year going through the same process. They get the oomph, they're flying high. Do you know they're on by the end of the year? They come back and they have that that regression piece that's significant, and we've seen the same pattern. So I think it's all of that. I think we take both pieces, and I think we take our history, and we take our notes, and we take our conversations. This team has remained solid, so we're, we're carrying the same history together, and we have those conversations. And again, it's about every kid individually, so we personalize it to the best of our abilities, and I think we're getting better and better at that. So you may have answered the, the question I had when you talked about summer regression. And I always thought with children, depending on their birthday, growth spurts, all that kind of stuff. And if, did you say, Mary, it's the third year that you've used this? Yeah. So with that three years of data can, on individual children, can you determine whether they need more in the summer or less or need more at a certain time? Because you were saying they kind of see you start to see patterns. Everybody needs it in the summer right. here. We are. Right. <laughs> and that's our motto. So, stick so, to it. <laughs> so regress more. Can you see a can you or do you look for patterns like that to say, okay, this kid at this time, now that you have three, you know, time periods, yeah. you know, something happens at this point in time. So maybe we need to push it more. Right. I mean with and three years. We are we are starting to look a little more closely at mm -hmm. that because as Beth was saying, the F and P when you take out the computer and add a human. Um, you know, we weren't quite sure if, are we seeing that all of these, you know, half of the class regressed or did the teacher score a little differently than the, you know, the first grade teacher score a little differently than the kindergarten teachers. So did, did these children regress or is it a piece of the way we gave the assessments? So we tried real hard this year to do more, as Beth said, at faculty meetings, do more training, um, create guides. Um, talk about, hey, what if the kid gave this response? Would you give that a one, two, or three? Because, you know, teachers are grading response on a rubric, mm -hmm. which is very subjective. So we tried to do more of that because we are seeing uh, a different piece. Again, um, you know, we are looking at, you know, is it the amount of books? We pushed the uh, summer calendar, summer reading, some incentives to do reading. Uh, so we're looking at those pieces, but obviously something I'm very interested in doing. Well, I, th I think that's like, when you start to get enough data, that's what's exciting yeah. about it. <laughs> right, so looking more closely at the NWA <coughs> scores and looking at that, since the FMP is a little bit of variable. And people um, becoming proficient at looking at their own da data. Mm -hmm. You know, we meet as a team throughout the year as we need and three times a year on every kid, but the teacher can have access to that data as well to kind of do, it's time consuming. Mm -hmm. You know, it, mm -hmm. it is exciting. I agree. Right. Yeah. Not many people agree with me, right. but <laughs> <laughs> I think it's exciting. But it gives them an opportunity to be a little reflective of their yes. own selves. And yeah. Kind of and, take and their. Sometimes you see, you have teachers who will say, "I don't know if you'll meet a first grade teacher who hasn't said, oh, they just blossom in the spring. There's so much growth in the spring." Well, let's look at it. Mm -hmm. I right. I don't disagree. I taught first grade, so I, I I've seen it. Right. But let's look at the data because that really says and mm -hmm. says how much and for what kids. You know, so you can have those pieces, which I think you were alluding to, you know, is winter time a hard time? Our kids not, you know, our kids depressed and they're not doing it. I'm not saying this right. is true, but I'm right. saying, right. you know, right. are they depressed and not, you know, progressing as much as they're they distracted, distracted by the holiday? Right, are they distracted know? by the holiday, whatever. So, you know, lots of those things mm -hmm. can come to life as fact or fiction when you start looking at the, at the But then you can play with it a little bit just to see. What <clears throat> have, have you tried having people not test their own kids, like state ed's big thing that you don't yeah. test yes. your own kids. Yeah. And yes. does that I mean, seem to the, be teachers and special re teachers decrease in a rate of reliability? Yeah. Yeah. But part of the piece is when you're giving an F&P, you want to get to know that child Absolutely. and you want to know the reading patterns, the strategies they use. So we tried that, I think my first year for two months straight, I did every f &P for every child <laughs> in the district. Um, but that took away from that teacher getting to know and then mm -hmm. having that. Uh, so it's very difficult and, uh, you know, so we don't want to take that away from teachers. Um, That's a difference, and then also the that difference teacher, between assessing and testing. I mean, you right. want to assess you it. You want to assess it. Yeah. And if someone else does it, then there's always the, you know, well, they would have done it differently if I had asked them. Mm -hmm. They're more comfortable with me. They're not comfortable with the reading specialist. So um, we tried that. We didn't 
did not get a good review. So well, I, think I think when we use different data points, that's where we can have that powerful conversation. Because traditionally, that F&P and that NWA do follow nicely. Uh, even when we get the state results back and look at the older grades and see, I mean, they do, they do line up well. So I think it's adding the multiple data points and really looking at well, all the data pieces. And I think smart decisions made by administration to say, so we're going to take the time to do this. What do we really want to get from it? And what a teacher gets from it is more valuable than, you know, saying you can't test your own kids because this is the end all be all. You know, we've had plenty of that in other circumstances. Don't take away the value of that. And never do they intend, you know, for a teacher to miss out on what you can get oh, from it. Definitely. That. When, when will the state? Have, they they're not yet. out yet. We were promised July 1st, mm -hmm. but I, we are <laughs> not yet. So we're, uh, I was hoping we'd have it by this point, but as soon as they come out, I'm hoping they usually say by August. I mean, if mm -hmm. the reports are supposed to go home, the ISR, the individual student reports, uh, the deadline to order the forms is August 1st, so the implication would be that they would be out by mid-August. So I'm hoping that's at least true. Now, did you compare this data to the fall data and did you see a lot of growth besides what you see on the blue? I mean, for individual kids? Yeah, and I, I mean, obviously I have those. I did lay them next to each other. Um, and the teachers get that? Yeah, I mean, the teachers see it because we have a spreadsheet for every grade level that lays them next to each other. Also mm -hmm. puts in the state scores, puts NWA, puts F and P. And obviously, and we keep the history on it. Um, so they they can see that on the next Great. Basis. So that travels with them so the teachers can yep, they see the well, history we of the kids. Google Docs, so we have it in the Google Docs and everybody can, if we, we've gone electronic, we pull them up on, some people like hard copy, so we have those, but you can pull it up on a Google Doc and you can look at it um, and, and see it as it, as it works over time. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> 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 oh, <geez. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Scare you, dude? Okay, so we'll move on to 2.2, the district slash superintendent's program report. Sure, just a couple of things. I know it seems like we just met. We last meeting was. Again, right before the end of the school year, which I think there are six days left, just to kind of highlight a few things that might kind of overlap with uh, Mrs. Yotis's kind of principal report. It was uh, two weeks ago tonight that we had our uh, eighth grade graduation, which I will say, as I said in my opening remarks, everybody said, you know, you've never seen anything until you've seen an eighth grade graduation at Garden Dickinson, and they are 100% correct. It is something I've never seen before. It's quite amazing. Mm -hmm. um, definitely a to-do. Um, so again, very impressive. I will say what I'm very proud of with this group is that, again, one of the, the things that was nice was besides um, all of our students, we had 37 uh, students walk across that stage, and I thought that was very impressive, not only to see 37 students receive that diploma, or that certificate of completion, but also that that represented the work that went into getting those students across that stage, that they were not just simply pushed through, or there was, you know, there was a lot of uh, interventions, um, both socially, emotionally, um, but I think we all had a, a horse in the race in this one, so we felt very proud to see that every single child was able to participate authentically and move on to ninth grade, which was wonderful. Um, a very busy week, as you know, that was also uh, our, our one night only of Aladdin. It was great. Again, we used the stage, we maximized uh, the performance. So again, a great week to kind of end the school year. Aladdin was a uh, you know, pretty solid turnout, and also our first year um, as a district of actually doing a full um, production that was the actual production, not pieces of one, but the actual copyrighted production as a drama club. So that's very exciting. We're looking at actually doing it that next year as we make the calendar of doing that play in the spring and actually doing it two day, nights in a row. That way parents have the opportunity and families to see the show uh, on a Friday or Saturday night rather than using the, the, the stage. And we have other ways of doing that and also a good fundraiser as well. Um, so two weeks ago, we graduated our students. We said goodbye. And as you know, um, two weeks later, of course, oh, besides going with that as well, as, as I know the board is aware, um, very proud besides the data points that Ms. Bissell presented. Um, our region scores did come back, so besides our, our final exam grades and our quarter grades, things like that, was very proud of our earth science grades and also our algebra grades. We had, um, once again, 60% of our algebra students uh, passed with mastery, which is an 85 or above, and again, that's a class of, of 10. 
and 100% of our students were regents with mastery in our earth science programs. That was, um, again, our, our pilot program, as you know, this year. I know it's been run in the past, I believe, but we kind of brought it back as a before school piece. So that was very exciting for us to see that that really took off despite that it was being offered before school and it was kind of a, you know, what are we going to do with this? But again, the interventions and of course the work of Martha Ryan going into that and Therese Booch to make that a real solid piece uh, was very exciting. Going along with that, uh, two weeks later we have started the master schedule. I'm very proud because, again, though it's only been two weeks and I keep saying that, um, we're pretty close. Myself, Mrs. Yotis, Mrs. Murphy. I uh, have worked uh, very intently to kind of make that master schedule a reality with running earth science during the school day um, and also once again maximizing our opportunities so our students have access to accelerated art, uh, advanced English, uh, honors English, um, band, chorus, um, real world science, the class that you saw featured of course by Mrs. Ryan. So basically our students have the opportunity for all those courses without conflict during our school day. And as you know with the schedule, that's, that's a pretty unique challenge at a small place to make sure it's not always a choice. You know, it's either advanced math or advanced art, but we try to make that, and I think we're being very successful with that as well. But once again, that is a big uh, move for us to move Earth Science to the school day, and we look forward to welcoming 10 students into that class actually this coming year. So that'll be great as well. Um, so again, that schedule will be coming forward. Again, it kind of goes pieces by pieces, but our hope is uh, while our deadline is August 15th to get the schedules out by contract and also by past practice, it'd be nice to have a working schedule by the end of July of something that we can work with and we know runs and actually maximize our students in that piece. Um, building is being prepped already, as you might have seen if you took an alternative way in. Uh, the custodians have been, done a fantastic job. They started downstairs, they're working their way up. They said as of tomorrow, the downstairs will be completely finished and we'll be ready to move upstairs and then possibly by July 20th, the entire building theoretically would be ready for opening. So again, everything would be ready and done, and that's very impressive, I will say, the turnaround time, because as you know, we are, um, we've been using some substitute coverage, but our guys are working very hard and diligently, obviously, you know, that's two weeks with a holiday to have the downstairs set to go, furniture back in place, floors waxed, bathrooms cleaned. So very exciting for us as well to see them doing that, and that's also with, with being, you know, short one person at this point. Um, going along with that as well, uh, teachers attending conferences, as we talked, besides you can see the data points linked to the schedule, linked to that piece, we have um, about six or seven teachers on each side attending our Greg Tang conference offered by Quest Arbosis. Greg Tang is a, a math um, specialist, I would say a math guru, if I may use that word loosely, who is very proficient in kind of providing math strategies, math center uh, interventions, and ways to really kind of bring that math block to life. And also Lucy Calkins, who's part of the, the was part of the Columbia Writers Project, I believe she's out on her own right now. Um, Questar is offering that opportunity for staff to attend, so we've uh, actually able to send seven staff members uh, to each one, so basically every, um, to kind of bring that back. And once again, that goes with our new PD model of um, kind of a less reliance on the consultant model, but actually sending teachers out to bring information back to their own colleagues and serve as kind of turnkey trainers and kind of that inspirational there. So you have seven and seven, two different people, two sets of seven going. That's a great way to kind of bring that back as we get set for opening school. And those conferences are uh, both take place in July and early August. And again, uh, Kathy Marchione, as you might have seen in the paper, uh, and actually it's released the web, uh, we did receive, or we are scheduled to receive $15,000 in um, what you kind of could call bullet aid, basically one shot kind of um, aid as a result of kind of the Senate closing their doors. We've yet to, um, to see that yet, not in a bad way, but they did say it will be some time, and how they unroll that, of course, and, and in what installments is to be determined. But of course, that is open as when we do receive that, and if that does wind up being the final amount, um, we'll kind of look at our needs um, in terms of either technology, um, lab supplies, things like that, any area. Uh, one of the key things of bullet aid, as you might have heard before, is um, that's always a nice gift. So it's always nice to use that on what I would say is a consumable rather than using that as a, to, to supply a staff member or to fund a person because that's an ever growing piece. It's great to buy stuff, you know, things that you wouldn't rely on, but things that you maybe wouldn't be able to purchase in a regular budget year. So, of course, we'll look at that as Bell and I and Tom watching over our shoulders. Uh, closely, as we close the books on 2016, <coughs> Um, you know, looking to see what's left, be maybe that rock wall or two, you know, why not, you know, <laughs> but infinite money. Um, you know, what, what is left that we can kind of, besides when we replenish our fund balance, what can we roll over and use uh, for things, like I said, stuff, you know, things we need to kind of enhance our program, you know, be that in the form of technology, lab equipment, things like that, things we might not have been able to purchase in our regular budget. But I will say we're very solid so far. Um, and of course, last but not least, just throwing it out there, um, again, I keep saying despite only two weeks, it is exciting because we have been asked a few times, our second grade program, as you know, is to approve through the budget. We are scheduled to still go with our model of a teaching assistant to be assigned exclusively to the second grade levels. Um, our goal is to put out for hiring, as I have mentioned before, early to mid-August, depending on, we're kind of watching, I'm watching, I should say, OLAS on purpose because we want to make sure that we pull together the best candidate, but also there's a lot of competition out there right now with open teaching positions, uh, retirements, things like that, so we certainly don't want to open a position and hire for that 
and then rehire because that person decided to go to another district and take a, a full-time teaching position or something like that. So we're waiting for the waters to settle, but we'll have somebody fully in place for that role um, to introduce, of course, and hopefully be appointed at the August 23rd board meeting, and then, of course, to unveil to our families that are in second grade and are building as, as the addition to our program. And, of course, any other hiring will take place then as well, whether that be teacher aides, uh, you know, noon hour aides, things like that. And that brings us up to July 7th. Mm -hmm. okay. Questions? Yes. I, just, I just want to comment on graduation. It was gorgeous as always. I, I love our graduations, and I think there's there's something special about them. And it went flawlessly. It was a great night. It was so good to see all the students, including the one student that was able to come back and, and walk across the stage. He was such a proud little boy, and it was so it was, it was a nice night. And Aladdin was wonderful. We really need to do plays like that mm -hmm. on more than one night so people Agreed. can see the talent that our kids have. 100%. It was, it was fun. It was great. I would like to um, email the algebra teacher and earth science teacher mm -hmm. and congratulate them on their um, scores. Sure. If that's that'd be, okay with you. No, that'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Their emails would come up. Both yes. yes. And the other thing is um, maybe some of that bullet aid. I did suggest that we look at lab supplies since we are increasing earth science. Mm -hmm. And I would hope we're going to continue to increase it and increase it. And I have no clue what lab supplies are needed for earth science, but I'm told rocks and fossils. Yes. Had you <laughs> told me I was out west, I would have picked up some for you. But the entire time I was doing all these ranger programs and, and going into these caves and everything, I kept thinking, Every earth science teacher should be required to come out here and view this because it's phenomenal out there. So I I'm would sure like to be happy to go. Yes. We would pay for it. I <laughs> know. I think everyone would be, but it just should be mandated to see it in real life. You know, it's phenomenal. So well, if you want to go back and get us some, that'd be. Yeah. I was in one national park and I saw a guy picking up these rocks and everything and I said to him, and he was in a ranger outfit or I wouldn't have said anything, I said, you know, it is illegal to remove rocks from the federal, from a federal park and he goes, I know. <laughs> he just went to his car with this pile of rocks. So, I don't know, obviously right. the federal government's selling them. Yeah, you're making me wonder if that's where Carolina <laughs> Biological must get their rocks in. By yes, bootleggers. they got to uh, get them from you know, somewhere. We're paying a lot of money for rocks, actually, just little fossils. jewel kids. So, you know, I know. someone's I know. poaching. But, um, no. But I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if we have True. supplies for earth science. We actually, good, great question. We actually do because two things. Years ago, um, we did offer earth science. So earth science at one point was offered, and then it went away for a while. So we still had things in storage if you will and also this year we did believe it or not the supplies are very reasonable we actually just finished our order today because Martha and I went through each one to make sure that it kind of so Belle thank you for taking that requisition late um, but you know <laughs> we purposely went through to see because really um, if I may say earth science is a very reasonable science to offer because unlike biology and chemistry that have you know chemicals and pieces like that it's pretty much the rock kits the balance scales the reference tables the fake globes and a lot of masking tape, and pretty much you have your, your 30 labs, you know, so, um, masking tape? Radius, <laughs> circumference, and... Of the earth. Of the earth. <laughs> and we got plenty of that. Um, so, it actually works out well, so even with 10 students coming on, you know, the kits are there, but of course if we need something, we'll certainly, but it is a very reasonable, the labs that are required are very, um, reasonable, you know, unlike chemistry, where that's a very expensive science to maintain, so. I would not suggest we do that right now. Chemicals yes. Safety equipment. Goggles, you know. We don't need goggles. Is it part Rocks of the Rocks yes. don't hurt. Do I have to get a? It's part of the school. So, uh, well, right now it is. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully the rest of it works out the mm -hmm. schedule, but it's. Okay. With a built in lab the during the day, too. Yay. So the lab, because there is a lab yeah. period, so it doesn't pull a student from. So it's very. Uh, to say again, sorry, it's very exciting to build a master schedule because as much as you think it's easy in a small school, boom, 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 but to build, you know, 103 kids but allow them to not have to make dire choices, you know, and offer a full program is pretty exciting. Labs are hard to get in. They are. Because it's once a week, that's it. Now, do we have enough calculators for the algebra kits? We did. Um, 
we, we do because we're maintaining the same number. We've always had about 10, 11 students and we have the same enrolled or projected enrollment into the course again. Part of our supply money this year is to replace some of those um, and also the batteries. A lot of times it's the, the batteries. Some of them last year. So we're kind of a five go out, five come in. You know. Do we buy Sir, calculators? Because I know we bought a $100 calculator. Well, I know I bought a calculator. <laughs> we, um, <laughs> you have to do that to for do homework. Mm. So we don't let the kids we and we have to have a set for oh, them to use for the test. test you know, yeah. <laughs> no, we don't want it to go home. Uh, we don't want one. No, the one that you oh, bought. They, yeah. <laughs> like what? Yeah, you could, oh, the home. one you bought. Oh, that should be home. home. I mean, it's no. I mean, like oh. for homework, I don't remember ever seeing it out. But I don't know. Never mind. She's really smart. If she doesn't need it, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, just it we'll take she the calculator if you don't need it. I mean, please. Okay. Please, we can use it. So I saw a calculator out at my house. So we're, we're, we're in good shape. Okay. So Dr. Rudin, though, I would, I would like to express my condolences on one of your peers, because I know that particular superintendent's group is quite close. Yeah. Um, so condolences yeah. for uh, Superintendent Horan from Kodak. And so um, just wanted to let you know that, you know, we're thinking of you um, during this time period, which must be difficult, because I know that you had a special relationship with him. Thank I, you. Took the words out of my mouth. Actually, that was bullet number eight. Was um, as I'm sure some of you or most of you are probably aware. Um, shows you the difference that we can make. You know, um, Bob Haran was a really um, good man, really a true humble man. Truly, um, everybody says it's about kids and loves kids. He really loved students, and so um, really good guy. So In innovative. Yes. Very innovative. Very. So um, services are tomorrow and Saturday. But a great obituary too, if you. Thank you. Great guy. I do have a question for you. In our organization meeting, um, our school attorney they're in their third year of three. Yes. So do you know when we'll be going out for a proposal for bids to? Yes, actually, my plan was to go out in October and kind of start soliciting, um, you know, <laughs> bids and kind of see where we're at. I think, um, and kind of see if they come up. The best, and of course, as a board, we can discuss. We'll discuss that. But I'd like to go out in October with our RFP. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Thank you. And I believe this is your third. This is your third year with by an awesome man, right? You didn't have them before, right? Correct. Gotcha. Okay, so yeah, we'll just to go out and we'll see what's out there, and like everything else, make sure similar to our insurance audit, we always want to make sure we're getting the best for our. Audited money. <laughs> Any other questions for Dr. Rudin? No? Okay. I guess we'll move on to the principal's report. Is yours? Ditto. <laughs> 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 you took my whole report. Um, <laughs> what do you well, say? What do you think? Can I put that in a minute? Ditto. Ditto. Um, so, <laughs> second desk. Um, yeah, we had a great um, wrap up of the school year. The uh, drama presentation of Lana was amazing. Um, you know, as Tom said, I think moving it up, getting it away from that graduation, you know, the festivities might give families more of an opportunity to go out because they just did so much work. It was just outstanding, outstanding to think that they pulled it off, the costumes, the uh, the music, it was just amazing. So thank you to Janine Mitchell and Mary Alice Newell and uh, for running that drama club and the music and the lights and the sound, it just was amazing. So uh, they do an amazing job. Uh, graduation, as Dr. Reardon said, was just, phenomenal. Every year I say it, but each year it looks a little like they've kicked it up a notch. <laughs> the pink limo, <laughs> um, the gowns, they were beautiful. Um, I do want to say, uh, Jason McCord, if you haven't seen the website, the pictures he posted, I uh, actually got a couple of emails and a phone call from parents just um, how happy they were with the photography. It was like they had their own photographer there. and. Um, so everybody left with, you know, a picture of their student on graduation with a diploma with Dr. Reardon and I, and parents were just very choked up by it and called to say how beautiful uh, the photos were and that he took the time to uh, take each student. So um, I want to say thank you to Jason because I didn't even know he was going to do that, but some parents really appreciated not being able to get up and not being able to get their camera going, um, but he has a, you know, there's a beautiful photo of every student with uh, both of us with the kids, so it was great. Um, so I also want to thank the uh, eighth grade advisors, uh, Laura Horacek and Therese Butcher, for all their work in organizing that, the graduation, the festivities, the 
awards, uh, dessert dance, the dance itself, um, so much goes into that. And I know that they worked tirelessly at the end, making sure everybody had their you know, flower and that they were set to go. So uh, shout out to them, um, they did a great job. And uh, you already talked about the PD that we're going, the schedule's being built, so we're working hard. Um, a lot of teachers are excited to go to the different PD offerings, so uh, that's very positive. And right now it's uh, three of us with Amy Murphy, uh, Dr. Reardon and I working on that master schedule to make sure all those things are in the school day. And as Dr. Reardon said, kids are able to be accelerated or to get the help they need, um, the extra help they need, and still be able to take you know, our arts courses and you know, advanced art. And, to get it all in so uh, it's not as easy as it looks and you would think year after year would get easy and it doesn't seem to so that's what uh, we're going to be doing the next week or so that's it thank you thank you um 2.4 pto update i don't think we have one um you don't have any not checking the crowd making sure student <laughs> no i don't see um, so we'll move on to 3.0, appointments and authorizations. We'll do 3.1 through 3.6 as consent agenda. Uh, 3.1, approved CSE, CPSE recommendations as per attached. 3.2, resolved that the Board of Education authorizes, the authorizes and directs the Board President to enter into an amended employment contract with, super, with the superintendent effective July 1, 2016 in a form substantially similar to the draft provided by the school attorney, which amends and continues the existing employment contract dated June 18, 2015. 3.3, approve Kate Cronin and Michelle French as modified girls soccer coaches as per the WTA contract. 3.4, Accept the resignation of Elizabeth Bissell, District Data Support Teacher, CIO, and Reading Coordinator, effective August 26, 2016. Accept the resignation of Elizabeth Jamison, Teacher's Aide, effective August 15, 2016. And accept the donation of $330 from North Greenbush Memorial Post, 1489 for classroom flags. Does anybody want any of those? Separated? No? Make a motion to accept them. Second. Any questions? Just to throw out a comment, actually, if you're wondering why, um, just uh, for the audience, just a audience, sorry. Um, yeah, th there is an addition. Um, we have an agenda that's different. Um, we did have a, a Beth Bissell has resigned to accept another position. Um, so that just came in before the copies you have was on the website. Um, and also 3.6. Um, we expressed that our flags in our classrooms were getting a little bit dingy and we just brought up to Legion if they had any extra flags. That'd be great just for a few classrooms and they actually have funded our entire, uh, that this will fund replacing every flag in each classroom with a brand new flag. So nice. we've sent them a beautiful thank you note but once they come in, um, we did order those online. Um, so once they come in, we'll do something very, you know, something big on our website and of course we'll go down personally to thank them. But we really were just looking for a few, like seven or eight flags and they said, well, we'll do the whole building. Nice. Very so, nice. And some of them are pretty old, so this is good. 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 So do we give them back to the Legion to do the, as part of the burning ceremony? Yes, they'll, they'll take care of that for us, which is nice, okay. actually, because that way we're not right. awkwardly disposing them. Yeah, but we, they, they are very, the we tried to wash one. It was very fascinating. I mean, the water was black. It was, you know, so it's, this is good. But again, above and beyond, we. Absolutely. Really cool. And these I, are the, the good ones, too. I know graduation night, before it started, one of the guys from the Legion was there, and somebody was asking me about, I've got all these flags, I don't know what to do with them. Can you take them? And they said, yeah, just drop them off and we do a ceremony. And yeah, I think they said they'd bring them the flag. Mm -hmm. so. That's great. Yeah, we're and and Neil, our, Neil's been very green. Neil, obviously, being a former Marine, is very mm -hmm. excited about this, too. So. Good. Any questions? Okay. Mrs. Castle? Yes. Ms. Dynan? Yes. Ms. Gray? Yes. Mr. Lanesy? Yes. Ms. Mick? Yes. Okay. We'll move on to 3.7. Second reading of Board of Education Policies. 1222, Relationship with Booster Groups. 15, 
1500, public use of school facilities. 1500E, public use of school facilities exhibit. 1530, smoking on school premises. 1900, parental involvement. 3000, goals and objective for the administration. 3100, superintendent of schools. 3120, duties of the superintendent. 3210, administrative team. 3240, line and staff relations. 3300, policy implementation administrative regulations. Can I have a motion? A motion. Second. Questions, concerns? Uh, yes, this is for Tom because I'm on the committee. So last I left it, the smoking on premises, you were going to find out about e-cigarettes and vapors and vaping and all the yes. proper wording. And I'm sure you did that, but I just have been gone. So yes. what was the final? The final uh, verdict from the, the attorney was that vaping, the verb, you know, we basically added a parenthetical including e-cigarettes and vaping. So basically it covers smoking, e-cigarettes, and also vaping. So e-cigarettes are different than are, vaping. Uh, yes. E-cigarettes have tobacco, vaping does not. Okay. Doesn't have to have tobacco. A whole or committee. Or nicotine. Or, nic yes, or nicotine. Or nicotine. The key is nicotine. A whole committee so, said yes. around going. So what do you think? Is it different? Is it not different? None of us. And the marijuana question, I think we fell under the no drug-free school zone piece. So. Yeah, if we have a, I didn't know there was a question about that. If there's a glaucoma person, it's still a, you know, you have to wait. They have to go to the road. So. Well, you we, weren't in Colorado. I'm not saying. Interesting open house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's my only question. That's okay. how that resolved. Okay, so we'll move on to approve all those policies. Okay. I'm not going to read them again. But it's all the same ones. I'll make a motion. Mm -hmm. there, was a, there was already a motion in that oh, second on the I, table. I thought that was for this up here. I think we motioned too early. Yeah, a little early. That was just okay. the We'll rescind up. that motion. Okay. I took that motion. <laughs> okay, now I'll so make a motion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to approve. <laughs> to approve. approve. Okay. <clears throat> second? I already read them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Ms. Castle? Yes. Ms. Dynan? Yes. Ms. Gray? Yes. Mr. Lanesey? Yes. Ms. Mike? Yes. And just so the board's updated too, the policy committee does have a scheduled meeting in August. I, the date is escaping me. I feel like it's the 10th, but I could be wrong. It was um, it's in an email or in my calendar. But basically, um, as you know, the policy review committee's the goal is to kind of expedite our policies and get them through so that we're not, um, you know, hung up with older, outdated policies. So we do have a few left to look at, but we'll be looking at hopefully our uh, next coming forward will be our 2000 series. So we see, our, you notice this, we go from one to the threes, the threes were shorter. Um, so the 2000 series is the goal for August. You know, if, if that meeting can happen, everybody can make that and we kind of make it through. So I think the date is now, I'm saying the 10th, but it doesn't sound. Kathy? I thought it maybe I had it in my calendar. I know it was a Wednesday. Yeah, the 10th is a Wednesday, but I don't. I don't remember and what we said. I'm trying to think too. I mean, as we get closer to the committee, I'll send a, a reminder, but I believe I'll just do a quick check. But the goal would be maybe because at this point, we're, if we complete the 2000 series, we're caught up. So NISBA has not sent anything since then. So then we'd be ready for the fall. And then they'll start, hopefully, with the, well, they'll definitely start with the 4000. Are they going to go back and do the ones that we've pulled out? Oh, yes, in the committee. So if anyone has any comments on the thesis, let's see. Let me just assume that Dave is now. I'm curious. Those people that need, want to know. Uh, the 10th, Wednesday the 10th. Okay. Katrina, you still had outstanding right. questions so, on so, the, what, yeah, the sexual so like, harassment right. one? Or? And yeah. then the superintendents, we had to get yep. something about. Mm -hmm. yep. I'll make sure that I email. Right. Superintendents, we just approved it. No, it was a different yeah. set. Oh. And earlier. Yeah. Zero, I think. Can we talk about booster groups? I know that was a question. Do we have them? Are we going to have them? 
we don't have them. We'd like to, or we'd at least like to have one, um, an athletic booster group for, the, for our athletic program. One. <laughs> One, because it billion. seems odd to have a policy when we don't have it. Yes, um, we we want one actually because athletics definitely wants one. Um, so I think the goal would be we have a parent that's expressed and it actually a parent on our committee uh, has expressed interest in being in charge of the GD Athletic Booster Club. If, and it will be for all teams. For all teams, so rather than having, you know, a, a softball one, a baseball. Um, they felt they could do this as one piece, you know, so that everything from you could sessions, um, some spirit wear, things like that could be just to the athletic fund, to fund athletic uh, pieces, I should say. Okay. What kind of things do they need funded that we don't already fund? Um, great question. <laughs> um, I think the latitude to be able to say, you know, for example, if, um, like we allot a certain amount for jersey replacement each year, um, goals, you know, like our goals are fine, our soccer goals are fine for now, um, but you know, if something happened where they, they felt the need to replace the netting sooner than we hit a budget for, things like that. You know, right now there's no major needs, which is good, but. Um, good question. Questions to my mind. Um, the issue of cutting kits, is that because of a uniform problem? I mean, I look at other teams like Skodak, they had like, or Shelmont, they had 18 kids and a special ed kit on their team. They had plenty of, so is that why we cut what boys? Oh, definitely not. I think it's just based on um, team size. I mean, also we we felt, or I should say, we felt, um, again, not being a sports person, so I apologize. I think sometimes it, the idea being rather than having 20 kids but one never plays, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Again, in basketball, you can have like, five people play at a time. Five at a time. You know, so rather than having a team of 20, but then I think that's the right marathon. Yeah. You know? I just yeah, see other so schools with no way bigger teams than mm. us. They want, you know. I feel like if they want to play, they need the exercise. or always it's sports, 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 sports. You, know, you leave it up to the coaches, mm. um, which is fine. I just you know, like this year, money you issue, know, a you certain know, coach issue. said, you know what, I don't believe in carrying that extra. You know, I want to only have this many. I think safety. I think, you know, it gave me a lot of reasons for it because I'm kind of like, you know, we're so small. Can't you take everybody yeah. and mm. sit them? Um, but then another coach said, you know what, I believe in that. I'll take them all. They should all practice. I'll put them in. So it's really the, you know, yeah. So I've had, That's you know, a, on opposite sides. So it's sides a different philosophy for yep. each coach then. And, and some, yeah, it's a great point. Philosophy. And sometime, um, sometimes it's not an issue because you, know, you have, numbers, you know, right. you have exactly yeah. a perfect number. I think what this year we had what baseball was very popular to want to play, I believe, right? Was it baseball or was it, no, basketball? Yeah. Basketball is where you, <laughs> the boys. You the boys, yes. Boys yeah. and softball was girls. Soccer, they're begging. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> please, please. Cross country were. Yeah, so I just wasn't sure if it was a uniform monetary no. type issue because I would, of course, love to see, you know, no kids get cut. Right. Possible. Even if they only practice and they're there for home mm -hmm. games, you know, we don't take them away. I don't know. But yeah. No, good that's point. That's for you guys. No, and that's a good, actually, um, good for your thought. You know, again, we do have an athletic policy and a philosophy. It does, it's very, like most philosophical statements, it's very, you know, but it does give us something, I think now that we have, you know, some consistent coaches, um, it does give us a chance now that we have on staff coaches to kind of build a, a solid program. For a while we had a lot of non-staff. And don't get me wrong, I don't care that Bridget got cut. <laughs> I was happy, to be honest, with you. and so many other things. <laughs> but I just no, it's a good point. That's good, you know, to some other people that I know might be trying out. Mm -hmm. I would like to see. <laughs> well, and the problem is, larger schools have the regular teams, but then they have those other like the B what are they called? I think intramurals or B. Yeah. No, yeah. the intramural. Intramural. Mm -hmm. That the other kids get right. to play right. on and and practice and learn and maybe be on the team, whereas. We're so small, we don't have that. Right. So, true. Have we already passed the um, athletic policy? You passed it in the fall. Yeah. yeah, like one of the first things. Yeah, yeah. But there was but no not hard in numbers this run. In that. But not right. in this run of them. Um, yeah. Oh, for oh. policies. Oh, policies. Yeah. Oh no, not in this. No, not in this yeah. run. So I think that that's plan. probably yeah, plan. something yeah. to. Yes. Discuss. But you raise a good point. There's also kids that probably would be playing JV if they were, Correct. We had, you know, the on our team. If they, so there'd be a natural. Would be up. Yeah. 
vertical place for whether you know we have. Right, but Chamon still I, had like eighteen. I was talking right, about. <laughs> and they had that special. Yeah, so that's girl. no, and that's Julie Herb because I, you know, we are modified and should be playing as many kids. I know you mentioned that Athletics wants to start a booster club. Does anybody in drama, seeing we're buying plays and costumes can be challenging? Great question. Um, actually, the, what's nice is the drama club, um, as you guys said, I think you had authorized the setup of an extracurricular yeah. drama club, so now they can charge for tickets, admissions, to buy the, the rights to the shows, because again, to buy a real show does cost, a, you know, you, should, you have to pay the royalty, and you should be paying it. Um, so now we have, well, we broke even this year, um, so that's good. But obviously, the goal will be next year. If we did two nights, you know, we could buy the show and run it, and then of course that excess could be used for costumes, props, mm -hmm. you know. Right. So break even is just paying for the show. Yes, okay. that was a close one. The show is expensive. The show is, as you know, we're expensive. I mean, you buy. I think if this was, um, it was six hundred dollars for the, the one night, and so that you could put the, the Disney label Disney. on. Do you so pay for per night? You pay. You, you pay per night. I mean, you. Oh. Um, no, actually, I asked about that. The five, five, the money for the license, it's for the whole year. Oh, is it really? It is. It's oh, I thought it was. Um, year. I thought it was per night. Yeah, I thought it was. Not. It's for really? the whole year. Oh, we should be running this now. Because I'm not for a show. Yeah, really. I mean. <laughs> yeah. You're paying for the copyright for the songs. <laughs> yes. You're paying for the script. And it is for as many oh, times I didn't as you Oh, I'm going to take a close look at that. I thought it was like. No, I asked that. Because I thought if we went to two nights, we were going to have to pay $1,000. No, right, five hundred for the whole. Well, I'm just. This is new told me. I'm just glad we're doing. Very curious. Non bootleg shows. That's good. <laughs> and, you know. Yeah, but like the racks or riches or the, those, <laughs> they you do they, you do buy the copyright, but it's only like forty bucks. Mm. Like for the. Just seemed an awful lot version. like Annie. <laughs> Almost <laughs> like it was Annie, but. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but no, something didn't seem right. <laughs> I know. Good show. When Anthony oh, was younger, God. they used to do a movie night here that the PTO would sponsor, and they mm -hmm. said that they had to pay this exorbitant amount of yeah. not hundred dollars or two hundred dollars just to For show up. Yeah, to show the five dollars CD. Yeah, <laughs> and they yeah. and all the kids would just be running. Yeah, and they, crazy. and they do and not the but they do check. I mean, Dis yeah. Disney and that they will check because I know we were when I was teaching, we were caught, you know, just showing one of the whatever was released at that point. I think it was. <laughs> it might have been, it was one of those toy stories. It was Toy Story. And, you know, I you always know, show it, was, you know, but you put it on the website and it's there and it, it was, you know, uh, someone you. from. The fines are heavy, too. They are very heavy, yes. Yeah. That was just in the inboard, onboard magazine about copyright laws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, good for doing the right thing. Anything else? Okay. Move on to old business. There is none. No, there. I asked Dr. Reardon a question at the beginning about my emails. Oh, sure. Um, your emails. No, in terms of our email, I do believe it to be secure. I mean, it's as secure as anyone, as any email server can be. Um, in terms of your, your emails, no, they were not distributed. I mean, they were distributed through a process, but no. Um, then how did people know what was in them prior? To that, that is I'm not sure of. Because they were addressed to you and from me, so there should have only been you and I who had access to them, unless someone is getting on to the email and/or the system. I would doubt somebody was, but then again, in terms of you know people looking at things that I certainly can look into and kind of see. Um, in terms of anything specific, I certainly can tell you that nothing was shared that wasn't, you know, until legal correspondence asked us to. Um, but some pieces that that were inquired required asking people certain pieces of information. You know, so as you can imagine. Well, I understand pieces would be, but the email wouldn't have been shown. No, the email would not have been shown. No, but in oh. terms of researching questions that you had asked me as superintendent, I did have to inquire with other people, which in turn where, you know, where is this coming from? Well, here is why we need, I need this information to supply to this person. But then the I, actual email, no. Then I yeah. would like you to look into how people have access sure. to I can certainly, 
Yes. Dr. Matt Lutz, talk to our Quest R people. Because yeah. I know you gave me the password over the email. So I don't know how many people have a similar password. Usually when a district does a rollover, they might go down and say, okay, we're going to give everybody classroom one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. So people may assume that my password was classroom 32 because they counted up how many you right. had. Right, as so, you know, we did that transition that was there. Yes. And we also were, you know, so I can certainly talk to, well, at some point, talk to Matt and obviously our tech staff as to kind of how passwords are generated, but we'll put out, you know, or out there. And who has them? Sure. Thank you. I don't remember your password, though, whatever I sent you. Well, it's still on oh. your email. Oh. Try it. Okay. And, and um, when I did check, you did not send out all of my emails. There were some missing. Okay, There's, I went through to what the best of what I had, so that's fine. Okay, I just want to be honest. Oh, you sure don't. I with everybody, they weren't all there. Okay, but if there's something specifically you want me to. No. Okay. No. Okay. Well, the request was specific. Pardon me. It was specific. So yes, it but shouldn't it, have been all. No, but it would have been an email trail or an email um, grouping. So you would have had the last two or three, and sometimes some were left off. I don't know if we will. I mean, for the um, record, obviously, in speaking of those pieces, I went, you know, obviously went through everything I had to the best of my request and printed out everything I had, sent to Bob, who then scanned it and then sent that piece out. If I missed anything, I, I don't, I'm not saying, I mean, nothing was redacted, I printed out everything I had. You know, no, I know, you know. he said so, that nothing would be redacted. Right, so everything that was in my purview and on the server was, was, was pulled. Right, and they were from my home and from my school, because I only um, archive the school ones. Right. I just, if I accidentally send it from my home, I get rid of my home every week when I got back from out west I had 600 and so so I just did a mass all gone gone so all right Google only keeps your mail for 30 days too is a little FYI when you delete a little fun fact when you delete because that's Google, what, like Google the company. Yeah, yeah. But what I asked Lee was how long and how big of a chunk of the memory does the board have? Because I have all my emails from the day I got on on my email. I know in previous jobs you could only have this much of the school server. So after 32, you were blocked and you didn't get any more or something like right. that. But the old I go server, back. their old server, there was a, a there was a finite amount of memory. Google now is pretty much infinite. I mean, there's no, okay. you know, on the cloud. On the cloud, yeah. I mean, well, the license we buy is pretty much no one could maximize or max out that. But the old server, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. New business. We don't have anything here, but um, I thought the board needs to start to think about our retreat. We don't have to come up with dates or whatever right now, but maybe we can, maybe Dr. Reardon, you can throw out some dates that, mm -hmm. as a start, and then we can go from there. You did that in August last year, right? Yeah. Was it August? Yeah. yeah. August. We've always typically tried to do it in August before mm -hmm. we start of school. One day. One day. Well, that's something that the board actually can... I can throw that out to the board and we can decide what works best for you. You know, is it a day? Is it a half day? Is it, you know, here? Is it, you know, there's lots of options. I know last year we did something, is it, you know? Cheap. You know, so. Cheap is good. Goals for the retreat, you know, things. So, yeah, we can start kind of looking at what's the goal. Yep. You know, is the goal to set goals? Is it, you know? Right. So, topics, too. Topics, yeah. So. Yep. Okay. 6.0, informational. 6.1, our 
next regular Board of Ed meeting will be August 25th, 2016, right now at 7 p.m. And 6.2, opportunity for the public to be heard. We have Meredith. Meredith. I wasn't actually going to say anything, but that letter that was read by the board, um, like, makes me feel a little weird right now, because you guys read a letter in response to a letter that nobody knows what you're reading about. So we all know that, like, the board got a letter. We don't know what the letter says. We know it's foyable, like all emails that come to the district website are. So you read this letter that, um, like, clearly any, I mean, this meeting is recorded. So the letter was not, like, very nice. And I think it's unfair that the board read this letter but we don't know what you're reading it about. You read, you chose to read this publicly, but you didn't choose to read the letters you received publicly, so nobody knows freely what you're responding to. And I think that's an unfair position to leave the WTA in and this anonymous letter, because that letter isn't very nice. Like, I'm sitting here, and that letter is, is while it's professional and you're asking the teachers to follow the protocol, this isn't what our community is like this isn't what we pride ourselves on we pride ourselves on the fact that board members and parents and teachers all have relationships with each other and the fact that a letter had to be stated and i i don't know why this even happened but what i'm saying is, is as board members you're elected and we appreciate and i wish i could vote here and i can wouldn't you say to these people this is you know while Yes, we're having this conversation, but these are the channels and you need to go through the channels. And the same would be said by you or by you or, you know, whoever. And I just think I'm annoyed. Like, I'm annoyed as somebody sitting in the public that I have no idea what that letter is in response to. And now I have to foil the letters that that's referencing to because that's an unfair letter and I think it really puts a bad reputation on the WTA, that letter. And I am a huge supporter of teachers. I mean, we all know that. And that letter, now I'm, I'm gonna find out what that letter is in response to. And I'm, I'm a little angry because like, I have issues with, all, with some of the teachers in the district. I think that letter makes it sound like shady things happen. And I'm annoyed right now. Like, like shaking voice in me because it's unfair that that was read and the other letter wasn't. And that's all I have to say. Okay. The only thing I would say to that is the WTA did ask us to investigate some stuff, and we did. Um, and we felt like we needed to respond to right. their letter so that they could have some closure for the summer, come back in the fall, and, and have known what transpired. And I can appreciate that, but the letter was responded to publicly while their letter wasn't read publicly. That's all I'm saying. So I'm annoyed, but anyway, I'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Meredith? No, I'm sorry, that's it. Okay. Anybody else? No? <laughs> <laughs> the, only, the only public left. <laughs> I, <am. laughs> I, make I make a motion to adjourn. Okay. I'll second. Aye. Aye. <clears throat>